Hi there everyone, Ollie here, welcome back to the channel once again. As I've said time and time again on this channel, coming to med school can be a bit of an abrupt change because often you have to completely change the way that you study to prepare for the exams, which obviously carry very high stakes for most people. This genuinely took me a good five or six months in the first year of the course to work out, and since then I've always tried to improve my techniques and try new things just on the off chance that I hit across something that I will actually find useful. This video is going to be about five ways that you can try studying when you come to med school. They may not all work for you, some of them may work. The idea is that this just starts as a springboard for you to try some of these more well-known techniques and if you find one that works for you, that's great. If one of them or more of them don't work, that's fine. Not everything works for everyone, but they're just some ideas to get you going. I'm also very happy once again to be working on this video with healthjobs.co.uk so if you're looking for a job in the healthcare sector go and check them out they're a great place to start for finding the healthcare career that you want. The first and perhaps most obvious way is taking proper notes. The way I do this is get the relevant lecture materials, textbooks, software or whatever I need in front of me and get a clear list of all the learning objectives I need to know. At Warwick we get these handbooks which detail point by point everything that we're expected to know for the exams. I also prefer handwriting my notes and organising them into these folders which you've probably seen before. I just don't like reading pages of text on the computer and I believe writing out the notes helps my long term retention as well. It feels more like something I've made and something I can be proud of, although I do know inevitably I'm going to have to scan them in at some point so I can access them digitally. I think no matter how you study, having a core decent set of notes for each given lecture or learning task is really valuable, as this provides the set of information which you're going to build on and adapt to each of the other learning methods we're going to talk about in this video. It's not particularly exciting, but it does make sure that you go through all the relevant content at a suitable pace and get everything together. Now not everyone likes mind maps as they can become a bit messy, but I'm a very visual learner and I feel that having lots of diagrams and the spatial layout of topics on the page can help me remember things better. I feel a lot more comfortable drawing neat pictures and tables on a big blank canvas and I can draw lines to connect ideas together. For example, let's show part of a mind map being created. We'll start with our central topic in the middle, heart failure. This can be substratified into left-sided, right-sided and congestive, but we'll focus on left-sided for now, which again we can divide into hef-pef or hef-ref. We can then take reduced ejection fraction and just note down sign symptoms, presentation, important history questions, causes, risk factors, things like that, as well as relevant drugs. From there we can obviously go down the exact molecular mechanism of action and gradually we'll build up a whole canvas of relevant knowledge. I also find online tools useful for this. This is Sketchboard.io, a simple and free online tool that lets you create custom mind maps and save them to the cloud, as well as export them to a nice image file when you're done for storing in your notes or sharing social media. Number three is flashcards, almost essential for simple rote learning. Flashcards are best used for short snippets of information that you simply need to know without necessarily being able to tie it to anything else. This might be an autoantibody associated with a condition like rheumatoid arthritis, just something where you have an isolated string of text, basically. Everyone knows how to make flashcards, get a small piece of paper or card, write down a question on one side and the answer on the other, then organise them all into a stack and go through one by one, simply constantly testing yourself until you can get more and more answers correct. These are some examples that my housemate Emily kindly allowed me to show you in this video. However, for me, paper cards are a bit inconvenient and not especially timely, so many med students in the UK use the free tool Anki, which I've talked about before. Not only does Anki allow you to create custom decks of flashcards and sync them between your computer and mobile device, it uses a technique called spaced repetition to decide how often you need to see particular cards. Ones you can answer quickly and therefore easily are shunted more towards the back of the deck, while more difficult cards you can rarely answer quickly are repeated more often. Other choices are available like Quizlet which you just saw in this video, but because Anki is free on Android devices and widely supported because of its open source nature, I consistently recommend it to any new or existing med students. 
Perhaps the most unusual one on this list, Mind Palace or Memory Palace is a technique that has a few other names and spins, but the main gist is that you're using spatial information to store data and make it easier to recall. I'm going to diagram it for you here on this board, we're making an imaginary space looking down through the roof of the Memory Palace in this case, but you can do it from any view or in full 3D if you can handle that mentally. It's actually better if you can base these on a familiar space, say your childhood home or your current house as it reduces cognitive load. Let's just work through an example. We'll start by listing everything we need to know. I'm going to use a completely non-medical example just to illustrate how this works, an 8 item shopping list. I want eggs, cheese, milk, bread, chicken, mushrooms, carrots and bacon. You then pick distinctive features of the rooms in your palace and assign items to those features, ideally in some sort of weird way, creating a path through the space. For example, I open the front door, which is a huge piece of bacon, so there's my bacon as the door. By the door in the kitchen are some keys, keys sounds like cheese. I walk through to the living room and someone is crying over spilt milk. The spilt milk makes me want to go to the toilet, so I go to the toilet but it's really small, there just isn't much room. Carrots I found a bit more tricky to work in, but then I look out the window and I see a carrot, a giant carrot with wheels. Then I go outside into the garden and I see the chickens that we used to keep, which naturally are laying eggs. I collect those eggs and put them in an honesty box by the drive to sell them and thereby get that bread. So there we go, I had an 8 item list and only used 4 discrete spaces in my memory palace. You can keep building this technique to remember more and more complex things, even when those things are completely unrelated. Even better if you can weave other senses such as hearing, taste and smell into your story too, these will all help you remember. Then lastly, I think potentially the most valuable way altogether of rising is simply to try as many past paper questions as possible, whether it's for your A-levels, your degree, med school, even higher exams like the MRCS, the best way to prepare for any exam must be to try and answer questions according to the mark scheme. You simply have to do things the way they tell you. Getting hold of past papers is a great place to start along with the mark schemes and if possible have someone else do it for you, or at least mark yourself extremely harshly if there's no one else willing to do it. That's the only way to learn answers to the spec. In terms of medicine, there are services like PassMed, QuezMed, BMJ, On Examination, even free quizzes like the Fantastic Questions by the team over at Geeky Medics are a great way to test your core knowledge and make sure you've got the depth required to answer the questions properly. So there's five ways of studying to try when you come to med school guys, thank you very much for watching this video, please be sure to hit that like button for me, leave a comment, subscribe to the channel, you can find me on social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, at postgradmedic on all platforms, be sure to go and check out the website as well for more free useful articles and study resources just like this, and thank you once again to Health Jobs for sponsoring this video, take care and I will see you next time.